Hello everybody and welcome back to CorkinJava.com. Today we're doing a video about how to develop your wine palette in the best way to taste wine. And we're also going to be reviewing a Sauvignon Blanc for you, so stay tuned. Hello Corkies, welcome back to Cork and Java, your go-to place for coffee and wine, reviews and how-tos. On this channel, we like to expand and enrich your experience with all of your favorite beverages. So if that sounds interesting to you, consider hitting that subscribe button below and that little bell so you're notified when future videos come out. So what are we doing today? How are we teaching folks? So we are going through uh, wine tasting techniques. So the first thing that we want to do... Well, let's, there's four main sections. Oh, okay. It's look, smell, taste, and think. So we got the Sauvignon Blanc here. It's from New Zealand. And we're going to be uh, demonstrating with this wine and reviewing it for you as well. So the first section is look. Right. So that's pretty simple. You want to, usually when you're tasting a wine, you only want to do about a quarter pour. I usually do maybe an ounce and a half to two ounces because if there's a defect or something in it and you're at a restaurant or wherever and you need to send it back, um, you didn't just pour a whole glass of it. Um, but and it, even if you don't like it, then you didn't waste that much of it. So, all right. So first off with the look, there's a lot of things to look for on a wine. Um, obvious the first obvious thing is color so um on a lot of red wines if it's aged uh it'll start to get a little bit more of a brownish tint to it as it kind of oxidizes in the bottle a little bit and then other things to look for that aren't color are the legs which this doesn't really have much of on this but a lot of like higher alcohol content um red wines typically they'll have what's called legs which is it, it's sticking to the sides of the glass um, and you can kind of see it running down. It sticks to the side um, as you twirl it and spin it. So what are some other things to look for when you're looking at wine? The clarity. That's yeah, true. Yeah. So how see-through is the wine? Is it really dark? Um, uh, the viscosity of it, like how thick is it? That can uh, give you hints to what you're gonna experience when you're tasting the wine. And even if there's carbonation, like in champagne. Mm -hmm. Yep, champagne. Or and other wines have carbonation too. And that's a, another good point to make is different wines have different style glasses that they're typically poured in. And uh, so when you're researching which wines to try, if you compare it with the, the proper glass, that's always a benefit. But um, typically, just the standard wine glasses are usually pretty good for most wines, except for, uh, I would say champagne is, you're gonna really want a flute for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so what's next, number two? Smell. Smell, yes. That's, this is probably, I would say, the most important part of the wine tasting experience is smell. Yeah. Um, I think it's something like 80% of taste is smell, and so it, same thing goes for wine. So let's smell this one real quick. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Yep, that's sweet. I get a lot of um, like sweet fruit notes, like citrus, mm -hmm. like orange peel, a um, little bit of lemon. I was also thinking like pineapple too. It's tart smell. Oh too. yeah, definitely. Now that you say that, pineapples hit me right. Because uh, I was like getting sweet fruit. Yeah, I mean, I would think like grapefruit, pineapple, like kind of like the really tart mm -hmm. uh, fruit. Yeah, so uh, what are some other things with um, smell to look for? Um, so one of the things that I read was to start big and go small. So if you smell a wine, you want to think, oh, okay, it's fruity. And then you have to think, okay, well, which kind of fruit is it? Like, is it the citrus or is it the, you know, uh, tropical, like, berries you know like there's different yeah you know, start broad things. and then start trying to refine it right try not to like really search for something uh like that the bottle says or that someone else is getting to really find it i mean everyone yeah. kind of has a lot of unique experience with the smell that they smell 
um, and what like memories or different uh, foods or items that uh, bring to mind. So it's sometimes you'll find you you'll really get something really unique on the nose and nobody else does. And you're like, I swear mm -hmm. this has like pepperoni on the nose. Like, how are you not getting this? Like, like there's some wines like that where like for me, I get a really uh, heavy scent of something and other people are like, man, I'm not picking that up. But yeah. that's that's normal. That's uh, every person's nose and palate are different. So mm -hmm. that's all part of it. Yep. Anything else on nose or are we going to go on to taste now? Um, I would think part of nose, as far as the technique is, is to like really stick your nose in the glass. Yeah, as far as technique, um, we didn't mention like it, but swirling, the swirling of, you see a lot of people with wine swirl it, that releases a lot of bouquet and aromas from the wine. So there's actually purpose to that. It's, it's helping release a lot of the aromas out and then really stick your nose in, yeah. get a nice big whiff. And that's, that's the proper way to mm -hmm. technique to smell. All right. Should I move on to taste? Yeah, let's do the All taste. All right. Taste. So to taste, you can, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay. But uh, to taste, you want to maybe get half an ounce to an ounce in your mouth and really swish it around. You can um, you can pull draw air through it like like almost like you're slurping a straw, and that releases a lot of aromas again into your mouth. And because a lot of the the taste is going to be retrohale or retro nasal, whatever it's called, where it's the um, vapors are coming through your mouth and up through your nose, and you're experiencing scent again, as well as uh, the, the taste. That reminds me of when cats are smelling things and they're like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have their mouth open really weird. Yeah. That's how they're smelling. So one of the things you, when you first put it in your mouth is you want to look for the mouth feel. How does it feel? Mm -hmm. Is it um, kind of velvety? Like a lot of times alcohol, uh, higher alcohol content can feel different in your mouth as well as a uh, light body versus a heavy body or full body wine, you're gonna get a different mouth feel um, for each. Obviously the uh, full body wines are gonna feel a lot heavier in the mouth than a lighter body, which will feel closer to um, like more watery or light. Mm -hmm. And also how something, how the wine tastes in the beginning isn't necessarily how it tastes like while you're drinking it and like after you're, it's out of your mouth. There's like typically, the yeah, there's three different stages for taste. First is that initial taste, like as soon as it hits your palate and um, your tongue will taste sweetness, it'll taste sourness, mm -hmm. bitterness, um, uh, those type of tastes. And then typically on the, the mid palate, yeah. like while you're swishing it around, it's had a little bit of time to be in your mouth. Uh, you'll start developing more different flavors and a little bit more complexity in the flavors. And then um, uh, after you swallow, more of those vapors from your throat go back up into your nose and you get a uh, lingering aftertaste in your mouth as well as uh, back up your uh, um, nasal cavity. So it there's also a bunch of different complexity that arrives on aftertaste on a lot of wines. Mm -hmm. And then just like we mentioned with tasting, um, with or smelling, with tasting, you wanna start broad and then work your way in as well. First, think of like, this is sweet, is this bitter, is this tannic? So tannic, uh, wines with a lot of tannins, you know that um, feeling on your tongue where it kind of dries it out, like. Um, it's a wonderful feeling. <laughs> yeah, so like that kind of puckery dryness that you get, that's tannins but also a lot of wines have acidity to it too. Mm -hmm. So um, think of like a lemon, like mm -hmm. kind of acid. And this one is very acidic. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some things that you're getting on the taste on this one? Um, it's definitely acidic. It's more minerally than I expected because it had such a fruity um, bouquet, um, but it has like a minerally taste yeah. as well. So the broadness I would say is it's acidic, it's got a hint of sweetness, not very much at all. No. Um, I would consider this dry, but uh, I wouldn't consider it bone dry. No. Um, so I am getting, you know, some fruitiness on uh, for the broadness, and then bringing it in, 
we get I get a lot of grapefruit, especially that sour type of grapefruit and um, uh, some lemon zest. I got more orange zest on the nose, but I'm getting more lemon on like lemon for sure on the uh, on the taste. Yeah, no, I agree with that for sure. Definitely more lemon. It's more sour tasting than fruity. Yeah. And um, for the aftertaste, I would say just like lemon rind I'm getting. Like kind of the bitterness of that, like the outside of the lemon, but still some of that sourness really stays behind, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Um, there's a lot of really cool things you can pair with this mm -hmm. for food. But we'll get onto that in a little bit. So um, anything else that you want to share for the tasting portion of it? No, I think we covered it. Yep. All right, so the fourth thing is think. And do you want to really give a rundown of what we mean by that? Uh, sure. Uh, it's just thinking about how you like the wine, I guess. That's essentially what it comes down to is, is it you know, dry? Do you like, you know, is it full bodied? Is it sour? Is it tannic? Is it acidic? Like, you know, just thinking about the kind of terms that we were using um, as you were tasting it and smelling it. Mm -hmm. um, to figure out what it is that you like about it. The think part comes with experience and it's something that you'll grow with as you develop your palate. You'll start to be thinking things like, does this taste like a typical Cabernet Sauvignon? Mm -hmm. Like, is this off to how it should be? Um, how uh, does this compare to other varietals that I've had from this region? Uh, how does this compare to the same grape from somewhere else in the right. world, like you'll start thinking of, okay, what's the difference between this and other things that I've tried? And uh, also a good thing to do in this category is to catalog the wines that you try. Mm -hmm. um, I typically will rate and review my wines on an app called Vivino, B-I-V-I-N-O, on my phone. And you take a picture of the label and uh, write a little blurb about it. That way you can have a catalog of what you've tried and see different notes that you've um, written about those wines. So you can go back and review them. If you're trying a wine and you want to kind of refresh yourself of stuff that you've tried that's similar yeah. or other things like that. And those are great ways to... And it's great when you're shopping in the store too, because yeah. you can see like, oh, have I tried this one? Or like, oh, what mm -hmm. are other people saying about this? So apps yeah. are definitely great. So yeah, uh, so the thing, portion is really where you're going to start to grow in your experience with wine is when you start connecting the dots of the wine that you're trying uh, to the different wines around um, that you've had. Not to mention uh, part of think is to do research about the wines that you're trying uh, ahead of time or while you're drinking it. It's really nice to like look up the, uh, the region it's from, um, a little bit about the farm it comes from, uh, the uh, the winery, sometimes you'll learn a little bit about their winemaking process. Maybe they do something unique. They'll maybe tell you about different barrels they age it in or how long things are aged. And all that stuff contributes to the uniqueness of the wine that you're trying. So, mm -hmm. And that also adds to your experience. Right. And part of researching is learning what grapes do the best in which regions. For example, like Argentina, that we mentioned in a previous video, they're known for Malbec. Um, Australia is pretty known for their Shiraz, which is Syrah everywhere else in the world. <laughs> and of course, different regions of France have their uh, own varietals that they do really well. California um, historically has done Chardonnay very well. Um, people are starting to get tired of that a little bit, I think. And so they're really doing a lot of Cabernet Sauvignons and typically um, they're more fruity on, uh, in California than parts of France and in, in the old world style. So different regions will add different characteristics to the wine that you're experiencing because you're really tasting a place. That's what I really love about wine. You're experiencing a culture and a place um, that it comes from, the soil that it's grown in and the climate and all that stuff plays into what's in the bottle, which is really the, I think the coolest part about wine. Yeah and one of the ones that you didn't mention here is the Sauvignon Blanc is New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Yeah so leave a comment below if you have any other tips for uh, tasting wine 
maybe you got a go-to wine tasting glass that you like or anything else, leave us a tip down below to help other people out. Um, also, if you're new to wine and you want to kind of kickstart your wine learning experience, I don't think there's any better way than to join a wine club um, and particularly the California Wine Club because they got a buy two bottles, get two free deal for your first month shipment. And so that is a really great offer going on. We'll leave a link down below where they'll send you two wines. You get a personalized wine consultant. They send you a wine magazine. So all the research is right there for you. All the think that we talked about, <laughs> they put that all in a magazine to tell you everything that you would want to know about the the winery that the wine comes from and all about the wine and you're gonna just get really good quality wine just shipped to your door you don't even have to go to the store to figure out which one's gonna be good because they hand select from small wineries that you're not gonna be able to get in most places around the country so it's a really great experience and way to kickstart your wine experience so check out the California Wine Club all right so let's rate this wine Do you know how much you picked it up for did we get this one at uh, Total um, Wine? I'm not sure, actually. No, I think this one was from Harris Teeter, okay. actually. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I have the receipt um, somewhere, but it was, I think most of the wines I picked up were around $15 per piece, so. Um, let me taste it one more time. Mm, it's good. Um, I would give this one a 90. I was going to give it a 91. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean... Right Sauvignon Blanc, um, this is killing it right now for the varietal. Mm -hmm. And I think the the sourness and the the punch it really gives you of some of these strong pineapple, grapefruit, I love those fruits by the way, uh, notes will make it pair so awesomely with like foods that I love, like some spicy foods, some seafoods. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I was just thinking like, like jerk chicken with mm. this like we had that for dinner i'm like man this would have gone so well with some <laughs> jerk chicken but uh yeah so i think shrimp this would be amazing with mm. some shrimp scampi or something like that mm -hmm. that to kind of balance off that uh acidity it'd be amazing so that's why i'm giving this one a 91. i think this is this is definitely a go-to buy best wine under 20 dollars right here yeah it's definitely really balanced and refreshing it's great for the summer yeah that's what i was gonna say it's a great summer wine you can mm -hmm. sip it out on the porch and just you know relax by the pool with this wine it's it's great mm -hmm. all right guys that's going to do it for us here at corkandjava.com make sure to find us on facebook on twitter and on pinterest so i'm looking forward to seeing you guys online and until next time bottoms up <laughs>